Good morning, everyone. Whoops, look out, mister. Or missus. We are on our way to church this morning. It's Sunday, July 28th. It's a day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. So, today I would just thought I'd talk right. about driving in the Philippines. Ignore Waze, he's in the background speaking to me and telling me how to drive. Um, this is our little exit out of our little gated community. We live in a little gated community called Green City Subdivision, Emus. Turning to Anmalagansa Road and we're heading to the main drag, which is uh, Aguinalda. And you gotta be careful in the intersections, but driving experience here in the Philippines is interesting uh, first thing you do when you get here as a foreigner you need to go to the LTO it's the uh, land transportation office and procure a license and it's pretty easy you just have to have a license from home and then uh, present that and uh, get uh, present that to the uh, people administration at the LTO and then they send you over and you get yourself a little physical very simple physical. Right. They check your height and your weight and you go back and they give you a license and you're able to drive in the Philippines so it's not too hard. The hardest thing is realizing it's a completely different skill set that's needed here in the Philippines to drive. Um, not a lot of rules, there's rules but they're not, you know, they're, they're kind of yes and no obeyed so you got to be careful. Uh, most intersections are interesting and then motorcycles come down your left and your right side as you just saw and uh, the traffic's uh, pretty chaotic a lot of people driving here in the Philippines and you actually have color coding on your vehicles so I have a license uh, and my license number dictate now my uh, car license number dictates uh, what day I can have I can drive and every day but Thursday so I get I have to take the car off the road on Thursday I have a little we go um, and that's what you're seeing here I'm driving and uh, we are heading down or up to Pasai for church this morning at Grace from Heaven Christian Fellowship where my friend Pastor Leo preaches and teaches and Pressy is a deacon Pressy's here I will introduce you to her say hi Pressy <laughs> Say it louder. Let them know you're here. Hi. Hey, there we go. She's putting makeup on. <laughs> anyway, um, I just thought I'd give you a little view of what it's like from my camera as I drive. We have a little trike in front of us. They're usually slower. You try to get around them, but I'm waiting for him to make a move here. It looks like he's taking a left. So, but uh, and I got a car behind me. I don't want to get anybody so we look around we get around them anyway uh, we're going up to the main drag here you'll see it up ahead uh, it's called Aguinaldo it takes you all the way down to the expressway and then you get on the expressway it's a tollway so you pay your toll and uh, a lot of tollways so they they pay for their infrastructure that way and uh, help to get people around it really becomes a difficult situation to commute um, you can commute uh, my lovely wife does it often. She commutes into Pasai sometimes. So she takes uh, from here at the corner, she will take a bus down to Cavite or down to Pasai where she works at the school. And so getting through these intersections again, now you just, you have to go out. You have to be aggressive and make your moves and hopefully you don't run into anybody. And then you're, now you're on the main drag. So we're heading, heading north to, towards Manila. See it off in the distance, and uh, we're heading to church, and hopefully a good time of fellowship and worship with our brothers and sisters in Christ. But um, other things you have to concern yourself about. You just have to be like 100%, 120% more defensive than you are back in the states. Um, if you can drive in the states, doesn't mean you're, you're going to be that uh, good here in the Philippines. Two things you got to have. You gotta have very be. You have to be very attentive and safe in your driving, but also you need patience. Patience is a huge virtue here in the Philippines, and I'm learning it because I'm not the most patient person. My mom used to have a sign in her kitchen, and I kind of agree with her. It said, "Grant me patience, Lord, but hurry up." And I always thought that was funny. The 
and that's kind of like my nature. So, but I've, I've adjusted well. I think my wife would agree with that. And I'm not so. Uh, I don't get stressed. And if you do stress, you're not going to enjoy driving in the Philippines. Uh, Sundays are a good day to drive because most people aren't working, and uh, the buses are still running. And the jeepneys. You see a jeepney up there on the right. That's a big mode of transportation here, also in the, in the Philippines. Uh, fairly inexpensive to travel. Um, you have the trikes, they commute you in and out of the smaller areas and then jeepneys and then the bigger bus, you see a bus way up front there, that uh, is another mode of transportation. You got to watch for these little uh, side shots here that divide the road. People come in and sneak in. You got to watch all the time for passenger, or for walking people, for jeepneys like the one on my right because they are always now these people crossing the street you just be careful so they don't keep walking and uh, they're supposed to obey the rules but not always but it's it's a challenge I must admit but I'm enjoying the challenge it's not too, I'm, I'm up to it but like I said on Sundays it's pretty quiet traffic wise so it's a good day for me to practice my driving and to uh, get us down to get us up to church but it's a it's a nice drive this Aguinaldo is a main main road between, uh, well it goes all the way south to Lake uh, Tagatai, which is a beautiful community, uh, mountain here. It's on a, there's a volcano called the Tao Volcano and it's uh, in Tagatai and there's a lot of resorts and places you can eat and things like that. So it's kind of a nice place. You just head a little more south and you get there and we've done that a couple times. I've been there and uh, it's a nice drive but it's like this. It's all straight. <laughs> But this has been a, this is a road that's been here for a long time. And this community, it's like a suburb, I would call it, up here, uh, where we live in Cavite. We actually live in Malagasang. And it's a little little uh, offshoot. I call them, uh, you can compare them to like our suburbs back home. There's a uh, little, you know, as people have sprawled out from the urban. Actually, what's happened is people come in from the provinces uh, to get work in the Philippines or in Manila. And so you get you got your condensed populations down in the cities, rather, uh, where we've had the urban sprawl, where everybody's moved out. It's starting to happen here. People are moving, like Presley and Leo, both have their houses up here or down here in Cavite. And there's a it's a good drive, probably depending on traffic, an hour and a half to two hours, maybe two and a half hour drive into work, mainly because they stop and go traffic. But as you see today, it's a pretty good. Good day. Gas is fairly inexpensive. Um, I put in a thousand pesos a week, and that's about twenty dollars. So it's only costing me about twenty to commute with my little Wego, and things are good that way. So we're we're handling it all right. But like I said, there's everybody wants to drive, so there's a lot of cars. And you got the taxis as well. There's a taxi up there on my right hand side. And you just like here this guy's gonna be turning and I gotta wait for him to turn because I got traffic on my other side. Not a little motorcycle. So, uh, yeah, and we'll keep going. But I thought I'd just uh, introduce you to the little bit of the driving here. Um, not a lot to say about it except that it's extreme. And you have to have to be aware all the time of what's going on around you. <laughs> Uh, I've enjoyed the, enjoyed the challenge. We bought the Wego. Um, mainly, I bought it because I wanted to uh, relieve my wife a little bit of her. She has to commute so often, so she she actually takes from school. She has to take a jeepney or a trike sometimes to a jeepney, which she hops on a jeepney. She goes to the Mall of Asia. She gets a van from the Mall of Asia, and that takes her to the bus terminal. Uh, the main drive that gets you up on the freeway and then the bus start, bus shops on a bus and that comes up this road the other way towards us uh, all the way up to the corner there where I was uh, turned on to and then she takes a little there's a little trike terminal there she hops on a trike and that takes her into the subdivision so it's uh, quite a step and that can take from anywhere hour and a half to sometimes three three four hours it just it's insane sometimes the traffic she has to you know rely on the she can wait at the terminal bus terminal sometimes for a while and that holds her up and so I just wait for her to get home it's kind of long she leaves really early in the morning and then gets home later at night so but we 
have Saturdays and Sundays together, and that's great. So, but as you can see, traffic is fairly late this morning, and that's good for us. Um, it'll be a little busier on the way home today. We need to stop at a mall on the way home, but I just thought I'd, uh, I'd share this video with you this morning. And uh, we may edit some stuff in and out. But, uh, if I think of anything to say, I will bring it up. But enjoy the ride. Ouch! There was a bump. <coughs> Excuse me. I've had a cold here now for a while. I'm working on it. And I uh, took some meds now and I'm thinking I'm feeling better. So that's good. But I had to do some visiting on Friday. And uh, so that worked out well. I was able to do that. And uh, we've got another trip on Tuesday. I'm taking with my pastor friend. I want to meet. I'm been made mission director of the church, so I'm going down, or going somewhere, to meet one of our pastors that we kind of support through the church, and uh, I'm hoping that will work out. We will have a nice trip. Yeah, that's crazy. See that bike there with the kids on it? Yeah, that's, they do that a lot. They take their whole families on their bikes. It's supposed to be two, yeah. But uh, they don't obey that rule very often around here. Like I say, rules are kind of yes and no. Um, I'll have to admit, I got in trouble. I, I, I actually slipped through a red light and didn't know it. <laughs> got pulled over and uh, my negotiated with the officer and was able they were going to take my light what they do especially if you're new and you're having been driving a lot they'll take your license away and then you to get it back you have to go take a little seminar <laughs> learn how to drive but uh, she uh, she uh, was able to uh, convince the officer not to take my license he simply gave me a ticket and I was wrong I shouldn't have done what I did I thought he was uh, wag flagging me through the intersection and but what he was doing was trying to hold me up. <laughs> so you live and learn. I'm learning more and more all the time. But it's uh, the experience is what I'm enjoying the most. It's always something, always something. So you kind of go through it. And here's the light now. If I'm careful, I go through it. So. Their lights are different. Uh, you're, if you notice the time on the on the clock says 60 seconds. That's a fast red light. There are some where you you can sit. They're timed like three minutes even. And you, so you sit. You, so you just put your car in neutral and put the emergency brake on and pull out your phone and listen to the radio. <laughs> Talk to your wife and just uh, enjoy the little time you have there. And then you get on the move again. So, but it's not. It's not too. There are times when you're stuck in traffic. It gets pretty intense. But again, just having patience and relaxing, and don't have to be anywhere. They allow for that. We usually leave fairly early before our, our uh, appointment of any kind. And then the other option I have, and it's been working really well, is uh, Grab. Grab is like an Uber or a, uh, uh, the other uh, sources of travel back home, and. Uh, and I use it a lot, and uh, actually I buy my loads for my phones on it and stuff, so it's a good app, <coughs> and it helps you get around. The other thing I use a lot is a, an app called Waze. It's like Google, Google Maps, but it's more, more oriented towards the Philippines here. It seems to know the area a lot better and can direct you better. And I use that a lot. It's on right now. I use it to uh, let me know when my next intersection is coming, for instance. If there's traffic ahead, it'll warn you about the traffic. All these things are courtesy of Waze, and it's a free app. It's a very effective app. It works really, really well. And uh, so technology here is well used. Uh, in fact, I think it was the Philippines that introduced texting. Uh, they're famous and well known for being the first ones to really initiate and take advantage of, of the texting capabilities of cell phones. I remember being here in 2006, and I had, had no idea. I had heard of texting, but I had never used it and didn't need, have a need for it, I didn't think. But I noticed that everybody here was using it, and I mean really using it. They were uh, always uh, on their phones, texting back and forth, and, and uh, sharing with each other that way, you know, pushing their thumbs on the, on the computer. <coughs> Excuse me, and it was fun to watch, but then I realized, you know, they were way ahead of us, and uh, now we text like crazy, so 
they were they were actually I think they're they're historically known as uh, being the ones who made it popular and, and introduced it. It's a good way for them to communicate. So, yeah. Still use it today. We all though we use Messenger a lot more now. So Messenger's nice. You can do everything from you know texting each other as well as um, doing video chats, things like that. So that's how me and my wife were introduced, for instance. Was through Messenger, so I have a lot, I owe a lot to Messenger. My love of my life to Messenger and Pastor, Lee. and the fact that she put up with me. <laughs> She's being really quiet. She's shy. Okay, we're entering. We're leaving Aguinaldo pretty soon now. This is about a 10 minute delay in between. And we're going to be heading up onto the freeway system. I'll introduce you to that a little bit. But first, you got to get there. Come up. We're coming up onto the entrance here. We'll up the ramp and head towards the first tool booth. So this is the ramp. What's this called? Freeway we're on? It's Kabitex. This is Kabitex? Yeah. Oh, okay. See, I'm still learning. But we can just be a little more uh, like back home. You'll notice that a little more expansive lanes and freeway. This is the infrastructure they're working on to get the traffic a little more reduced. And it seems to be working. It's a little more enjoyable for me. It's more like normal driving back home. Nice four lanes wide. Good maneuver back and forth. A little more controlled traffic. And if you look to the left, you'll see the ocean. You can see that. I don't know if it shows up on the camera. Right to our left, we're driving right along the, you know, the bay of Manila Bay, I believe it is. Manila off to the left in the distance as well. Actually, the metro one. Traffic's a little reduced. Again, this can be really busy on a weekday. As you see going the other direction, there's a backlog of traffic. That's pretty normal. <coughs> but we uh, we're going in the right direction today. A lot of foliage, a lot of greenery. It's really pretty. I like riding the freeways too. So, yeah, there must be an accident or some kind of blockage going the other way. Because normally that would be flowing very well too. But you'll get stuck in those. Sometimes you can be stuck for hours in a you know, traffic. Actually, one time we went to a mall and we were going to stop at this mall in, uh, I think it was, uh, Das Marinas. And we were coming back from visiting Cressy's mom's grave. And we thought we'd stop and pick up a few things at the mall. Well, it happened to be they were having a 70% off sale. So we pulled into the entrance to go into the mall and we got stuck in the parking, just moving around in the parking. It took us two hours, literally two hours, to get through the parking lot and to get back out. We didn't even go into the stores. So that's kind of one of those uh, things that will that'll happen once in a while. It's uh, very interesting. Anyway, I'm entering up, coming up on the toll, so I have to concentrate a little bit on which one I need to go into. And make sure I don't go into the RFID. Yeah, I can go in any one of these today. We'll go into the exact hole because we have exact that makes you get through a little faster. And so you come up and you'll see them the, quite an extensive array um, of tolls. And it's really kind of the way they uh, you'll see a class one is 24 pesos, not too bad. Uh, if you figure 100 pesos is two dollars, you can go from that, that helps. So 24 pesos isn't bad. And uh, that's class one, of course, class two is depending on the size and type of vehicle all the way up to 72 pesos. So we're going to do the 24 and we'll do an exact toll. Nice. Lavender, kind of like fuchsia colored boots. Thank you. 
that was the experience, a toll booth experience. So there you go. Enjoyed that. So we're getting closer to town. Uh, right the, yeah, you see off in the distance now, you see the skyline. That's where we're heading. On the left here now, you're going to see the PTEX. That's the bus terminal. That's where my wife goes to get pick up a bus that takes her back down to, uh, to Cavite every night when she uses the bus. But it's a brand new terminal and they're just starting to figure it all out. It took them a while to get things figured out, but I think it's working pretty good. Now it's supposed to help relieve the bus traffic down in the inner city. There's The buses get pretty aggressive and get in your way and cause a lot of traffic problems. They stop right in the middle of the road to pick people up. So they're trying to eliminate a lot of that and uh, it's a it's a big task for the uh, for the city officials. But uh, you know considering the amount of people and the amount of traffic and everything that goes on here, um, I think they do an admirable job. It's uh, it would be impossible you think about how hard that would be to uh, to maintain. But uh, they, they seem to do okay. So we're coming into the inner city now. A little different driving again, once again. And uh, we've got a few more turns to make. So if I see anything interesting, I'll bring it to your attention. We're coming up on the famous Edsa. This is the main drag through Manila and all. And so I'm just going to let the video speak for itself in some respects. We want to get the right lane for this. We're going to come up to what's called the bottleneck. That gets, uh, it's a separating or dividing area. It uh, can be really hectic, but some days it's easier than others. During the week, it can be just really scary. But uh, you just gotta have again patience. Trust yourself. You wait for people. Uh, a little aggression helps sometimes. Uh, this is where I got into trouble. There's a bigger guy. You see the overpass there? That's where they separate the cars. They've got a big intersection there. So, you see the green light? That's the one I went through. <laughs> I didn't go through, I just slowly crept through it and got in trouble. But because of the laws, that's an automatic reckless driving. Because uh, that's how the laws work. <coughs> You'll see how now you're congesting with the buses and the jeepneys are picking up and dropping off people. So they're just they're maneuvering for positions and you gotta... If you're gonna make a move, make the move. That's what I'm talking about. He's making a move and he doesn't care about anybody else. See, I can't go through that light right there. We're almost to church. Pretty close. We get through this little section, we've got a maiden of shade. <coughs> Pardon my cough. your breath. <laughs> the secret here is stay behind somebody bigger than you and then you just follow him.
cutting right through. No, there's a <laughs> the Jolly Bee sign up here. You can see it high in the air, and that's where we make our next turn. The buses seem to rule the world, so you gotta be careful. Yeah. There's traffic merging here again from another intersection, so we gotta be careful here. Adventure is we're in the real tight inner city type streeting, and this is now we're heading towards the church. So, this is kind of a challenge as well. And we are entering into Malibai. This is where I stayed when I was here. I lived on, I'll show you, maybe I can point it out to you. The residence that I stayed in when I was here for in September. And then, or when I came in April, and then I stayed from September, and I stayed there until December after we were married. Then we moved up to my love's house, but uh, I lived here for like four months, and so I got used to the neighborhood. It's people, 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 and doggy, doggy, doggies. Little children like that one just about ran out into the street, and they have a little girl watching her. Just doesn't seem right. Where's mama and dad now? Turn right. But these are tight, tighter. It gets tighter even yet when we head in towards the church itself. But uh, it's maneuverable. Just again, patience, patience, patience is a virtue. There's a canal here we're going to cross. And there's the Iglesia Ni Cristo Church. Come on. People own the roads right in these areas, so you gotta gotta be aware of that. They're, they're not good. they're kind of somewhat ignore you, so you have to be cautious around that. There's a church on the left. Turn That's right. not ours. We are going to turn into right here after this jeepney moves. Slims down even more. Getting close now, though, folks. Turn left. <coughs> Again, pardon my cough. See the kids? They just got to be more careful. But that's kids. Kids will be kids. Oops, we got a car, so I will wait. see them coming so you try and make a little room so they can help help them and then you go keep going okay this is the main drag it's Vitalis it's the drag into the church and this is the tightest one of all after this we're we're home free home.
all right everybody that's the end of the video um our journey has ended we are now at the church and the school and uh so if you notice on, uh, on the left hand side you'll see that big green gate we're going to enter in there park our little wego and go in and do some worshiping today with our fellow brothers and sisters of christ at grace from heaven christian fellowship uh, thank you for joining us on this journey i hope you enjoyed it and if so i pray that you would uh, hit that subscribe button that would help us out immensely and along with that subscribe button if you notice there's a notification bell as well just hit that notification bell and that will get you the videos every time we post one you'll be notified of it and also we would really appreciate it uh, if you're new and we're getting started that if you would hit that uh, like and share like if you like the video hit the like button the up uh, the thumbs up button as well as the share and then it will get out to more and more people lord um, has helped us so much and we're grateful to him again we just praise him and thank him for everything that he's doing in our lives pray that we will continue to be able to provide good content but lord willing we will uh, be able to update our software and update our uh, video hardware that would help us a lot i do have a gopro and i'm hoping to be able to use that possibly to input uh, better video and better audio in the future for now i'm just using my dash cam but i hope you enjoyed this video i pray that everybody is well and god bless everybody and thank you for your prayers in jesus name